Okay, now we're looking at whether to retain a piece of equipment or replace equipment. This decision, we look at the costs affected by the two alternatives, keep or replace. Generally, these are the variable manufacturing costs and the cost of the new equipment. The book value, that is, what the old equipment is worth, is irrelevant. It's sunk. It's history. It's gone. Sunk like the Titanic. A sunk cost is a cost that cannot be changed by any present or future decision. If I can trade in or get cash, then that should be considered. But what I paid for it and how much is left undepreciated is irrelevant. Let's go to an example. Assume Jeff Codd Company has a machine book value $40,000. Irrelevant and useful life of four years. Okay, the new machine is available. Costs one hundred and twenty. dollars and expected to have a zero salvage value. That is, when I sell it at the end, it's worthless. And it will last four years. If we require a new machine, variable manufacturing costs will go down from 160 to 125. What should we do? Well, incremental analysis. We have our two alternatives. One, retain, two, place. Well, if I retain, it's gonna cost me 160,000 a year to operate. For four years, it's going to be 640. If I get the new machine, it's going to cost me 125 a year for four years, so it'll be five. So the incremental difference there of replacing, we're better off uh, in cost savings by 140,000. However, we must take into consideration the cost of the new piece of equipment, which is 120. And when I take that into consideration, you can see that this alternative is better than that alternative and it's better by 20,000. So the decision here is to replace that equipment. The lower variable manufacturing costs due to the replacement more than offset the cost of the new equipment. The book value is a sunk cost and should not affect the decision. Okay. Now we look at whether or not we should keep or eliminate an unprofitable division or segment. Uh, so let's take an example. Here we have a company and there's three divisions, Pro, Master, and Champ. And we look at the income statement. We break the income statement into Pro, Master, and Champ. Sales, 800,000, 300, and 100. Variable cost, 520 for Pro, 210 for Master, 90 for Champ, 820. Pro has a contribution margin of 280, master 90, champ only 10. Fixed costs that have been allocated or divided among these three, 80,000 for pro because it's a bigger division, 50 for master and 30 for champ. When we do all that, champ is unprofitable. Total profit is 220, but you see that's carrying champ at 20,000. So it looks like if I got rid of champ, I wouldn't have this loss, and my profit should go up by 20000 should be 240000 Well, though it appears that way, the reason is fixed costs is allocated to CHAMP will be absorbed by the other products. Now, if I get rid of CHAMP, I get rid of the sales, I get rid of the variable expenses, I get rid of, of the um, contribution margin, but I, oh, heck, get out of here. I still have um, the fixed costs, and I have to divide those fixed costs. That extra 30 has to be divided. Keep in mind, this 30 has to be divided now between pro and master. And when I do that, you see my profit did not go up. It actually went down by 10,000. So by using incremental analysis again, we helps us make the decision as to whether or not I should eliminate an unprofitable uh, division. And the reason here is, no, you don't do that because, you see, what we uh, are going to lose is the 10,000 contribution margin towards the fixed cost of um, this company. We cannot get rid of those fixed costs. But, you see, Champ was picking up a portion of that fixed cost or at least making a contribution towards covering that fixed cost. And so that's the end of incremental analysis and eliminating an unprofitable business. Okay.